Howard Dean uh, used to be a pretty solid lefty, or so it seemed. Uh, he was basically the Bernie Sanders of the 2004 Democratic primary. Now, I know it's, you know, crazy today to bring Howard Dean and Bernie Sanders up in the same sentence, but back then, you know, he really was. But then he lost the primary, and he sold out big time. In fact, he sold out in such a gargantuan way that he worked as a healthcare lobbyist, and now, and now he's one of the biggest corporate tools out there. So, here he is on MSNBC, and he's going to lecture the left about purity. Let's watch. There has always been a section of the left, which I call, call as the, the, uh, the whiny party, the party <laughs> that doesn't really want to win, they just want to be pure, and if they go down swinging purely, then that's fine. Well, the problem with that is it leaves behind the people who really need their help. If we're going to have a single payer or Medicare for all or whatever we're going to have uh, in health care that covers every American, as every other industrialized country have, then we all have to pull together. And people who sit out or, cr or crank on some candidate because they did this or that, it wasn't to their purity test, are basically turning their back on the very people they pretend to represent. So I don't have a lot of patience with, the, with this wing of the progressive party and there and this look this is a lot of this is a media creation the media sees conflict it creates this to do there are not a lot of people that feel the way that you all described about Kamala Harris yeah uh, and uh, you know I think we just have to get a life and pull together and do what's right for the country instead of having these silly fights among ourselves which I have to say are perpetrated in part by the media no, and so uh, this was in the context of talking about Kamala Harris uh, who is likely going to run for president in 2020, and the establishment is coalescing around her um, because she checks almost all the boxes. So in other words, the establishment, they love to put up a Mick liberal. Why? Because they could pull the wool over everybody's eyes and go, oh, come on, what do you mean? We are, we're giving you Kamala Harris and you're still going to say no? So in other words, Kamala Harris, let's keep it 100% real here, female, uh, black, and has just enough on her record so that the establishment can look at progressives in the Democratic base and go, oh, what the fuck? What more do you want, man? What do you want? Now, when you uh, dig deeper into her record, though, you find out very quickly, oh, there's a reason why the establishment loves her. Because she's not a populist leftist. She's not a revolutionary. She's a corporatist. So, for example, she was the Attorney General of California. Uh, when she was the Attorney General of California, it was recommended by her own office, hey, you have to go after Steve Mnuchin, who was the Goldman Sachs banker. Then he, uh, ha he uh, led One West Bank in California, and now he's in the Trump administration. He's Treasury Secretary. Um, but when he was the head of One West Bank, One West Bank was foreclosing illegally on people all over California, kicking grandmas out of their houses early. Kamala Harris said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go after him. And then what happened? Steve Mnuchin gave campaign contributions to Kamala Harris. So she's a corporatist and she's willing to play ball with Wall Street. And she's basically willing to be Hillary Clinton 2.0. So you have some good progressives, some populist leftists like Roseanne DeMora, DeMora who pointed this out and said, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> She has a lot of problems, Kamala Harris, so let's not go down that road for 2020. And what happens? All the establishment uh, Democrats and loyalist Democrats, partisans, come out and immediately claim racism and sexism. And then another dirty trick they do is they lump in other corporatists uh, with Kamala Harris to try to further drive that point home. So there was an article recently. I forget who had it. I think it may have been in the Atlantic, but it had Deval Patrick, it had Cory Booker, and it had Kamala Harris, and it said, these are Democratic contenders for 2020, but there's a problem. They're going to have to win over the base, the Bernie bro wing of the party. And then you had people like Neera Tandon on Twitter going, well, you know, hey, what what is it these three have in common? Gee, I can't figure it out. In other words, racist Bernie bros. They're fucking racist. They're fucking racist. Why else wouldn't you like 
uh, Deval Patrick, and why else wouldn't you like Cory Booker and and Kamala Harris? I mean, it must be, must be because you're racist. They're all black. Isn't that funny? The same people who are ride or die for Nina Turner, the same people who were the loudest in support of Keith Ellison during the DNC prime uh, DNC uh, leadership race. Now they're being smeared as uh, racists. Not a single one on the left, including myself, when we were pulling for uh, Keith Ellison over Tom Perez in the DNC leadership race, did we say to, to Neera Tandon or her ilk, I guess you don't like black people. I guess you don't like black people because you're against Keith Ellison. See, we don't do that because we actually believe in policy ideas and substance, so we can argue on the merits of the policy ideas, and we could argue for our chosen candidates based on their policy ideas. Neera can't do that. Corporate Democrats can't do that, so they smear the second they think they have the opportunity. Oh, you don't like these three black corporate Democrats? I guess it's because they're black. That's why you don't like- not because they're corporate, because they're black. And now, to bring it full circle here and talk about uh, Howard Dean, first of all, there's a giant contradiction in the comments he makes there. Let's get to that uh, right off the bat. He goes, um, well, you know, I don't have much tolerance for this progressive base because they're whiny. I'll come back to that. He says, but I mean, think about it. If you want to do something like Medicare for All, we all have to pull together. But that's right. That's right. Howard, but the second part of your statement contradicts the first part of your statement when you're saying, ah, yeah, look at these guys, they're whiny and they want to be pure, they don't want to win. But anyway, if we want to do Medicare for All, we all got to come together. That's right. But Howard, what's the problem? The problem is idiots like you don't want single payer, don't want Medicare for All. So you're the one that's not unifying. Isn't that hilarious? It's Their own arguments are never flipped back on them when they should be. You want to talk about unity? Okay, let's talk about unity. Why on earth would you not unify around Medicare for All when 61% of the American people want Medicare for All? What do you want to unify around a less popular policy that doesn't have an overwhelming majority of the American people behind it? Is that what you want to do? Why would you not unify around the policy that's the most popular because you are by definition going to get the most people on your side because most people are already on your side with that. So yes, I want to unify. Do you want to unify? No, you don't want to unify, because if you wanted to unify, you would unify behind the people's platform. I told you, what is it? Over a dozen populist left progressive groups, we unified. We unified around Medicare for All and free college and a variety of different policy issues. The people who are not unifying are the corporate Democrats. You're the ones who still want to be neoliberal. You still want to be corporatist. You still want to do the bidding of your donors, Wall Street, Big Pharma, for-profit health insurance companies. And then you lecture us like we don't want to unify? We're already unified! Come talk to us! Come talk to, uh, Democratic Socialists. Come talk to Justice Democrats. Come talk to People for Bernie. Come talk to Our Revolution. Come talk to everybody on the actual left. We're as unified as unified can be. You're the one that's not unified because you don't believe in what the American people believe in. Never mind the left. 80% of the Democratic Party, actual people, want Medicare for all. And you're saying, we shouldn't have Medicare for all. We shouldn't make that a litmus test. We shouldn't unify around that. So in other words, when you say unify, you mean unify around the same shitty ideas that lost to Donald Trump. Unify under Hillary Clinton's platform, which just got its ass handed to it. So he goes, uh, yeah, they're whiny and pure. They don't want to win. Anyway, if we're going to do Medicare for All, we need to unify. That's right. So let's unify around Medicare for All. Do you want to do that? No, you don't. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> and, and then, of course, the biggest part is, he said, they're whiny. Yeah, you know, I'm sure that was said a lot about civil rights activists, too. You're whiny, look at this. Uppity you-know-whats that are in the South. Uh, and you know, they're all, they're marching and they got their signs and they're sitting at diner counters that they don't belong at. They're so whiny, just accept your place in society. And you say, come on, Kyle, you can't make that comparison to, to the civil heroes like the civil rights movement versus today. What, you don't think people who are fighting endlessly to get health care for everybody, cover everybody, 
end medical bankruptcies as a thing, save 45,000 lives every single year because today 45,000 die because they don't have access to basic health care? You don't think the people fighting for universal health care are heroes? Of course they're heroes. Of course they're heroes. So yes, it is totally comparable. So yeah, I'm sure people called them whiny back then. I'm sure they called women who wanted fighting for the right to vote. Ah, uh, whiny. Why don't you just accept your place in society? Why don't you just accept the status quo as it is? That's Howard Dean. You know, whiny, whiny people on the left. So whiny. So whiny. And the biggest bullshit statement ever. They don't want to win. They just want to be pure. Well, sit down and take a load off, Howard Dean, because your mind is about to be blown. What if the polling data proves that the way to win is to be more pure? Wow, never thought about that, have you? Think about it. They've been running corporate neoliberal candidates for decades, and they have nothing to show for it. What do you have to show for it? So, under Barack Obama, the Democrats lost a thousand seats. A thousand seats all around the country. Hillary Clinton lost to Donald Trump, who was a joke, a punchline. The guy had a 60% unfavorability rating on the day that he won. So, we run your style candidates for as far back as the eye can see. And you get wiped out. And then you have the nerve to say, Ah, stupid lefties. They don't want to win. They just want to be pure. No, apparently, you don't want to win. You just want to be corporate. Because that's what it is. We got to stay true to our donors, our big money donors. So we got to not push for any policies that the American people like. And then now I'm going to turn around and scold the left and say they don't want to win. No, you don't want to win because we keep running your style candidates and we keep losing. So, no, the answer is yes, to be more pure means to win. So in other words, you need to have Democrats who actually make the case for free college, actually make the case for a living wage, actually make the case for ending the wars and Medicare for all and ending the drug war and doing a new New Deal for infrastructure spending, taxing Wall Street, raising taxes on the rich. If Democrats make the case for that, they can't lose. And they can't lose because the polls show the American people already agree with them. So you have to, have, all you have to have is somebody who's somewhat likable. Somewhat. Doesn't even have to be a lot. Could be like so-so. Hey, some people think he's a douche, some people like him. Somewhat likable. <laughs> Mixed with, I agree with the policies the American people believe in, and you fight for that tooth and nail, and it's guaranteed the Democrats win with that formula. And they have to st stop taking corporate money and PAC money. Which is what Justice Democrats are doing, by the way. Read our platform, justicedemocrats.com slash platform, and... Uh, read about our candidates on justicedemocrats.com and to donate justicedemocrats.com slash fight because our candidates take no corporate money and pack money. So they're principled and they will fight for the people and they will uh, push for the policy substance that's in that platform. So I know this isn't a thought that's ever occurred to them, but perhaps the more pure you are with populist left ideas, the better you'll do because those ideas are actually good ideas. Like, I love people who... I think it was Jimmy Dore who pointed this out, but it may have been somebody before him, I'm not sure. But they said, the only people who are mad about a purity test are people who can't pass it. Ain't that the truth? And, like, think about it. People, I mean, that's a word that's been, like, you know, that's a concept that's been derided. Like, a purity test, a purity that all that is is saying, oh, we we believe in something, we stand for something, and we'll fight for something. That's all that means. <laughs> hey, we have things we actually believe in and we're gonna fight for. Can you imagine defending the opposite of that? Like, no, we don't have a purity test here. We don't actually believe in anything. <laughs> we don't actually fight for anything, we don't believe in anything. I say that, but that's actually what the Democrats uh, are are doing. They just said it. They just said it recently. We covered the story. No, we're not going to have any, uh, any tests or anything because uh, we're Big Ten Party. Big Ten Party. So in other words, I want Wall Street in the same party that I have people who have been screwed by Wall Street. In other words, I want Big Pharma and for-profit health insurance companies in the same tent as the people they screwed over. 
I want people who are far right in the same tent as the people who are far left. So why- so you- uh, admit you don't believe in anything. You're just an amorphous blob and you want people to like you, but you don't actually stand for anything and you won't fight for anything. Gee, I wonder why the Democrats keep losing. Howard Dean, you're the fucking problem, man. You're the problem. Now step- step the fuck aside and let us win. JusticeDemocrats.com slash fight.